Alrighty then, let's get into our talk. Let's get into our talk. Very short video uh, uh, response, I guess you could say. I just want to address this uh, redundant uh, problem, I guess you could say. Shout out to the to the twins in the chat room. Dickens of reality. It's Friday. Spontaneous broadcast. Thank you so much. I just want to talk about this real quick. <clears throat> Short, spontaneous. Live response. <clears throat> there was a fella maybe about a month ago or less. You remember him and brother uh, Khalil was with him. The video was entitled something like Angel Snub Nub 7, 
humiliated and embarrassed. Remember that, that brother? Now he was on Facebook and he wanted to come on the broadcast. He wanted to come on the live stream so he can humiliate and embarrass Angel Snub Nub 7. And I, I don't mind. I don't mind that because I grow stronger when our error is being pointed out. There's nothing, I don't mind being embarrassed and humiliated in the name of truth. I don't find nothing embarrassing and humiliating when I'm trying to learn something. So if you can, so if you can teach me something, I will embrace that. I will question it. And I will, I need to thoroughly examine what you say, but I don't mind being shown error. There have been those who in the past who have shown me my error. And I turn around and thank them. Or I can say to you, you made a real good point. Let me think about that. You're not right. You're not wrong. I, you made a good point. I need some time on that. I need time to think about it. I need, I need time to ferment. And if I decide upon a more thorough examination, that you are correct, I have no choice because I stand, we stand on reality. We stand on the truth. I have no choice. I must, I must submit to truth regardless to whoever is telling the truth. It makes no difference. Whether that truth is coming from Joe Biden or Obama, or Ron L. Herbert, <laughs> or Family Guy, the Mickey Mouse Club, <laughs> wherever you find the truth, it makes no difference with the vessel because the vessel, the vessel is not truth. The vessel is just something that the truth just so happened to be in. And you should be able to recognize that truth. It goes back to the old saying in the scriptures, in the Bible, I believe it's from the Bible. When God is talking and God declares and says, my sheep know my voice. So since you really don't know what God looked like, and you really never had no personal, physical interaction with the God. The only thing you can do is go by your feelings, by the sound. And you should know the voice of God. So we should know. It makes no difference where it comes from. I should be able to recognize reality. I should be able to recognize the truth. When I hear it, it makes no difference. The vessel, the vessel does not own or dictate truth. It's just a vessel that just so happened. That's where you can find some truth. And even in the Bible, and I believe also in the Quran, it also tells us that Satan, this antagonist, this, this, this enemy of God, even the devil, Lucifer, can tell the truth. Now, in my personal experience, being incarcerated, those who oppress me, I stayed cordial to them because they had certain information, they had certain truths that I need in order for me to become free. Y'all don't understand that. 
you don't have to like nobody. If they speak the truth, you don't have to like an ideology. Like a brother told me, we should know how to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Eat the apple. If you're a vegetarian, shout out to Black Sign and all the vegetarians out there. You should be able to eat the apple, spit out the core, spit out the seeds. And by the way, for those of you who may not know, apple seeds do contain poison. It, if you eat enough apple seeds, you can poison yourself. There's po uh, Apple seeds are toxic. They have a poison for those who may not know. Uh, there are a lot of plants that vegans need to watch out for. They do contain uh, certain poisons. <clears throat> but I want to go back and, and talk about that disgusting fella that came to our platform a few months ago who wanted to humiliate and embarrass Angel Snub Nub 7. We gave him an opportunity. Did we or did we not? He was allowed to say whatever he wanted to say. He's upset because on this platform, you're not going to just say anything and get away with it. He's upset because the things that he was bringing, we wasn't going to let fly. And so now he's on Facebook writing a whole bunch of garbage, harassing me, thinking that if I write, maybe I can do better if I write this stuff out because clearly doing it in person, you, you don't have nothing going on. These people are trying to promote foreigners. It's not, it's not ideas. It's not beliefs. From their mind, they're trying to promote something a foreigner gave them from the 1930s. It's not self-discovery. It's something that they was taught and they learned from a foreigner, somebody from overseas. That's where they're getting their knowledge from. When you come here, there is no Chinese, there's no African, there's no Caucasian people, there's nobody outside of us that can claim anything on this platform. It's all self-discovery, years of self-discovery. From the very beginning to now, self-discovery. And like myself and brother 47, we was talking on a live stream not too long ago. In Islam, the one that is self-guided is called the Mahdi. We are the Mahdi. We are the self-guided ones. We don't need Marcus Garvey. We don't need Elijah Muhammad. We don't need Malcolm. We are self-guided. We are the Mahdi in real time. So I'm self-guided, self-discovery, and you're going to bring us some old leftovers, hand-me-downs, microwave oven teachings from 1930. <laughs> and you really think you're going to get that off? You won't get, you won't come to the home of reality. We're telling you, we are the reality's tip on earth. And you're gonna bring us spookism. You're gonna tell us about the, the spirits and the demons and the dimensions and <laughs> all this spooky stuff. And you actually, you are in the home of reality and you actually think you're gonna come here 
and get that off. It's not going to happen. And we are nice to you. And we explain and we explain to you. You don't want to hear it. But that man came on the platform and we let him talk. And if you watch the videos, he had no choice but to submit to reality. Now, once he leave reality and go back into his into fantasy and fiction, that's your business. But you're not going to come here and bring your fantasy and your fiction here and think that we're going to drink out of your cup. It's not going to happen. So what happens, and we have seen this countless times, <clears throat> these people, they cannot refute, they cannot debunk the reality's temple on earth. They cannot do it. So they have no choice but to attack the messenger that represents that truth. So they look at me, oh, you got a bald head. You don't talk good. You talk like a kindergarten. Uh, 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 you're too black uh, 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 or whatever they come up with. You wear the same clothes over and over, whatever they find. They want to attack the, the messenger. I want you to find one video and not only here, but you can go on the internet, Daily Motion, Vimeo, other sites, and now Rumble. You show me one video where I attack people, their person. I don't do that. How many times? Have I talked about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? I talk about his actions. I talk about his behaviors. I talk about the belief in the ideology. I do not talk about his suits. I don't talk about his hair. I don't talk about him as a problem. I don't talk about his wife, his children. I do not bring that up at all, period. I don't talk about his dog Scruffy. Shout out to Minister Farrakhan dog, Scruffy or, or, or a Rover or Akmar, whatever you want to call your dog. I tried my best last year, even though we went, we was going through what we went through. I tried to try to keep it to a behavior, to allegations. I don't care about you. I don't talk about people's looks, your hair. You got a big nose. What clothes you? I don't. That's not my concern. I don't care. But when these poor pathetic losers, they cannot handle reality. So let me try to shame. Let me try to spit personal things at the messenger. Exactly. Now, to my knowledge, out of all that mess from last year, we are actually trying to do better. We are practicing something that we call the healing. We want to be better. We're not about the beefing and the drama. We are about trying to become better human beings trying to be more motivational and inspirational in a positive manner. But there are many who was part of that foolishness last year. I call it foolishness last year. And they are still on that path. That's not our problem. We don't do that. I'm not doing that. Exactly. They can't, they can't let the foolishness go. But yet they claim they have all this knowledge. I want to teach the people I have all this knowledge. 
understanding the supreme wisdom. Well, when you gonna start teaching it then? When you gonna start presenting it to the people? Only thing we see is your your beefing, your nastiness. I'm gonna I'm gonna sue so and so. If I catch you on the street, I'm gonna beat your ass. You know, crazy stuff. That's what you see. We had to go to court and hopefully that action stopped all the crap coming to us. Leave us alone. We are leaving you alone. We left you alone last year. And when it's all said and done, we win. And even if we lost, we still win because we win even when we lose because truth is on our side. And the soul train moves on. Um, Nepal Shadar still flagging his channel. There's little, there's still little bits and pieces. When I was messing with uh, Sister Noble, I was putting her promotional video in my videos, and that's what she's flagging. So there's still some bits and pieces out there. She's still flagging. They can't let go. That was last year. I was finished with them people last year. They steady. And these are the ones talk about I love black people and, and they put on this, they put on this show like they care about folks and all this other stuff. You don't care about nobody. Can't let go of the foolishness. Got to acknowledge Sister Ann. Where did, where? Got to acknowledge Sister Ann. Sister Ann is in the house, y'all. Small talk is in the house. We got to, got to stop. Got to stop everything. Sister, Sister Ann is in the house. Sister Ann is in the house. Got to give her a shout out to Sister Ann. She's in the house. I have to acknowledge those who support me. I have to. That's the law. <laughs> That's the law. I have to I have to support those who support me. <laughs> Just say, yippee -ki -yay, yippee -ki -yay. And also don't forget to uh Subscribe to the Dickens of Reality uh, YouTube channel. And the link is in the uh, chat room. Sister Ann just put that. And I want to congratulate the Dickens of Reality because that channel has hit over 100 subscribers. Real subscribers. We're not buying subscribers like some people jump from 800 to 1,000, then 2,000, 3,000. And they was, see, you know you're buying, you know you're buying subscribers and views. You've been on YouTube for 10 years and you only have 300, 400 subscribers. And all of a sudden, you jump from 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. <laughs> you know, they, they buying subscribers and views. We're not going to buy anything. So every view that we get is real. Every subscriber, every comment that we get is real. <laughs> they so greedy, they couldn't even wait. I mean, do it little by little, you know, buy a few subscribers, little by, they gonna jump from 500 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 3,000. <laughs> And what kind of content are they are they offering? It's not like they're they're very entertaining or nothing like that. It's the same old same old revised stuff 
that countless people have on YouTube. <laughs> it's pitiful. People want to be famous. They want to be leaders. <laughs> they want praise. That's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about leadership and praise. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If I want praise and I, I, I want all these views, I know exactly what to do. I know exactly what to say in order to, to get that job done. Tupac said, <laughs> Deacon said, zero people in that chat room with 5,000 subscribers. <laughs> you know it's not real. <laughs> oh, wow. They want this, they got this, they have this need. I want to be famous. Now, it's Halloween. I have my little Michael Jackson um, jacket or whatever. I could go down in the street and do some Michael Jackson moves or whatever and draw a crowd and, and, and do a video. No big deal. I know what I need to do in order to get attention. It's easy. I could do that. Tupac said, May he rest in peace to the great Tupac Shakur. Tupac said, we have enough entertainers. Now, that's still in my blood. <laughs> that's still in my blood. The entertainment thing. Tupac said, we have too many entertainers. And I will express and I will use that talent for a higher purpose, not to entertain your happy ass. So that it can help me bring this real message to the masses. Because I'm not an entertainer. We are here. We wanted to save our lives, we want to put ourselves in a better position. <laughs> That's what we want to do. These sisters do enough entertaining. They can't do what I do. They can't say what I say. They do what they do. We need revolutionaries. That's why I want to have this quick talk right now. We need revolutionaries. We don't need, we don't need baseball players. We don't need football players. We need revolutionaries. We need people, liberators, who have dedicated themselves to change the condition of a people who have a vision, who control, who want to control their own destiny. You have those who claim that's what they want, like this fella, but they really don't know what to do. They don't really know. They're just regurgitating and plagiarizing stuff from 1930, 1920. They really don't know what to do. They try to copy dead folks from 1920 and they were not successful. And you should try to understand why they wasn't successful. Why it didn't work. There's a difference between, <clears throat> there's a difference between being the same and similar. This is 2022. We are in similar circumstances. 
but we ain't the same. And this is what they don't, they don't get. Our time is similar to Marcus Garvey, to Malcolm X, to Dr. King, Medgar Evers, Harriet Tubman. We're different, we're similar. And things have changed. So we need to change also. We have to be different also. The minds of the people are different than they was in 1920, 1930. Because the ones we're dealing with right now, they are more comfortable in their oppression than they were in 1920, 1930. What makes a person want to change? Discomfort. I'm going to use this as an example. It's sort of nasty. But it gets the point across. What make you want to go to the bathroom? Is because you start feeling uncomfortable. Your bowels want to release something. And it start hurting. Because you need to go to the toilet and boo-boo. Now, as long as you're comfortable... You just sit there and play on the computer. You listen to Angel Snub Nub 7. I can hold it. You, you know you got to go, but I, I, I can hold it. But when it starts feeling uncomfortable and you start farting and stanking, you know you need to go to the bathroom and it start hurting. Then you go to the bathroom. You got the release. Because of the discomfort. The people that we're dealing with are comfortable. So, so you're going to have to talk and deal with them differently because they're comfortable. Pretty cars, movie stars, <laughs> swimming pools, <laughs> pornography. They can go to the porn store. They can drink all the liquor they want. These people are comfortable. They don't give a damn about no revolution. Revolution from what? We is free. What you talking about? We we ain't free. What, what you talking about? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> they ain't tripping on pro-blackness and pan Africa. They don't care about all that stuff. They waiting on their Netflix subscription. Going to the movies. They going to Disneyland. Matter of fact, some of y'all pro- Pro-black, pan-African folks, y'all doing the same thing. You getting ready to take your family to Disneyland and Six Flags over mid-America. You, you're doing the same damn thing, so you can't talk about nobody. Right. They living the good life. Same thing like this joker that was on our platform. Talk about his son. What you going to do with your son? You're going to take your son to Chuck E. Cheese, uh, to some playground that black people don't build because we don't have nothing to have the good life. We don't have a Six Flags. We don't have no, no play areas. We don't have a, a, a black Chuck E. Cheese. We don't, we don't have nothing. So you're dealing with people who are comfortable in their oppression. They were very uncomfortable in the 1920s and 30s, it was real for them. These are comfortable. You couldn't be a vegan the way Black Side is a vegan in 2022 in the 1920s. Be more difficult. But when you live a comfortable life, Veganism and all these different diets, you could do that when you live a comfortable life. I, 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 I don't, I don't eat meat. I, I, I don't eat uh, meat byproducts. I don't eat eggs. I don't eat uh, cheese. Uh, 
I, 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 you can do that when you're comfortable. Now let's look at Ukraine. Those people in Ukraine on their special diets are really suffering. The Russians are trying to knock out electricity and their gas supplies or, or, or whatever. You can't live comfortable no more. And even Elijah Muhammad, and even Elijah Muhammad taught, what you see in foreign lands, you gonna get it right here in America, your comfortable ass. Is that close enough, Sister Ann? That happy ass? <laughs> Your comfortable ass. <laughs> yeah, you could do all that being a comfortable Negro. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. <clears throat> we deal with reality here. And reality hurts. Truth hurts. We don't deal with fear mongering here because I'm not trying to make you scared so you can give me a lot of money. We're dealing with the reality. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. Simple as that. I'm not trying to make you scared, but if you don't do this, if you don't put fire detectors in your house, if you don't put carbon monoxide detectors in your house. These things can help you survive a fire. I'm not trying to scare you because your house can catch on fire. That's what we do here. We're trying to put warning devices in your house to save your life. Because we don't want you to die. <laughs> Dick said he get him some shrimp from the white man later. <laughs> of course we comfortable Negroes. All of us are. We're comfortable Negroes. I don't see nobody really. We, we're comfortable Negroes. Now, when I was in my in my youth, I was very rebellious. I was ready to tear some stuff up, but my the people I was around, they weren't ready for no action like that. They wanted me to be comfortable like them. Oh, find a find a wife and get married and have a bunch of chillins and buy you a house. What the hell? How you gonna be a revolutionary? But you making plans, happy, happy plans in the land that you are rebelling against. It don't make any sense. I always question that about the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam teaches that America is about to be destroyed, the fall of America, but yet they having babies in America, buying farmland in America, trying to build themselves in America. It's like this. It don't make any sense. It's like you know a car is going to catch on fire and you're going to invest, you're going to put a system in it, you're going to put brand new tires on the car. That don't even make any sense. Nobody is going to invest in something they know is going to be destroyed. That don't, It doesn't make any sense. And you do have people that really, that really do that. They invest a lot in these old cars. They put systems in these cars. They can't afford to uh, rehab these cars, whatever you call it. And they put systems in these cars and new tires. Then the, the car end up going to the junkyard. And the car, the car is only worth $600. And they invested $5,000 in a $600 car. People do it all the time. It's, it's dumb. That's my car. I love that car. You, 
you're going to invest $5,000 into a $600 car and then send the car to the junkyard. People do that, though. So you have people here. They attack Angel Snub Number 7 because they cannot do nothing with our platform. So let's let's attack Angel Snub Number 7 as a person. And the sad thing is they really don't know me. They don't know nothing about me as a person. They don't know nothing about me. And what little you do know about me is because I told you on a video, if you don't watch a video, you don't know nothing about me. But that's what they do. <laughs> Sister Ann said, reminds me of when I, when I first met my husband, he put $400 rims on my $800 car. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> Ain't that crazy? <laughs> I know in I know down south, those brothers used to do it all the time. Four hundred dollar rims on an eight hundred dollar car. If you really cannot afford to really fix that car up to where it needs to be, that's a waste of, of, of time. That's well, that's, that's a waste of your money. And you see these cars within a, within a Within two years or whatever, they end up in the junkyard. They do that out, out in California too a lot. The car is only worth eight hundred dollars, and they spending all this money and, and, and investing in this car. And next thing you know, it's in the junkyard. It makes no sense. So, so this fella decided. I put up a post in remembrance of my mother and I briefly I briefly mentioned my father and so he decided and he decided to take the comment that I made about my father and say that I hate black men because I have daddy issues. Here's my, here's my, here's my father. I don't have a lot of pictures. This is probably one of the best pictures. I have a, I'm gonna find a better picture. But this is the most common picture. You can barely see him. That's my father. There's a better picture. I need to find it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start promoting that picture because this, this one doesn't. Give him justice. But that's my father right there. That's my daddy. And if you really could see him, when you see me, you see him. <laughs> we look almost the same. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> we are the same. He was uh he was very dark. You can tell he's very dark skinned. My mother was very dark skinned, so, and I'm very dark skinned. But that's that's my 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 father. Now, many of you have been following. I'm not gonna say fo following. You have been listening, listening to this ministry for a very, very long time. And you would know me more than some bozo off the street. I very rarely talk about my father. I think sometimes I might say my sperm donor. I might say that sometimes over the years, but I don't even talk about my father like that. I don't even bring his name up. I don't talk about him. How can I talk about somebody I really don't know? 
I have no anger. I'm not upset with my father. He was in the house with me sometimes and whatever. I don't know, but we didn't have we didn't have a, a relationship or whatever. I'm not the only one. Many of us, especially in the black community, many of us, we have a poor, dysfunctional relationship with our parents, mother, father. Some of us didn't have any parents. We grew up in the foster care system. We was adopted. Hopefully we was adopted by good people. We didn't have, we, so, so I'm not nothing special. So what? I'm not angry at my father. I'm not upset with my father. Even if he was there, he didn't have nothing to offer me. He wasn't very educated. My grandmother said that he was the he was the roast carrier of the neighborhood. My grandmother told me that people knew him because he carried roaches roaches in his car and he was a drunk. <laughs> I really don't know a whole lot. So how can I be upset with somebody? I really really don't know. He never hit me. He never was abusive to me. Why should I be angry at him? He wasn't around. I didn't, I didn't need him. I'm fine. I'm cool. I have no, there's nothing for me to be angry and upset about. I never, you never hear me make reference to him, talk about him. I cannot talk about somebody that I don't know. Lionel Chavis, I showed you pictures of Lionel Chavis. Lionel Chavis, who I probably only knew for six months, he became my surrogate father. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They were my examples. They became my father, surrogate father. Which is fine. There's an old African proverb it says it takes a village to raise a child. The African proverb did not say. It did not say the two-parent household. The African proverb says it takes a village to raise a child. So in this society, according to this African proverb, in this society, every child is your son. Every child is your daughter. So when you see a single mother, that's your children. When you see a single father struggling, that's your children too in society. Of course, America is selfish. It's all about me, mine, your biological blood. There are people who are not your biological blood that will treat you and love you far better than your actual biological bloodline. This is a fact. I would get a piece of bread from a stranger quicker than my actual bloodline. This is a fact. They asked the Jesus of the scripture about his family. And I will paraphrase, but Jesus basically was like, whoever is in line, whoever's with, with the father is with me. That's my family. That's what the Jesus said. The Jesus didn't trip off bloodline. Bloodline, blood don't mean nothing. Exactly.
physical blood don't mean nada. Don't mean nothing. This is a fact. He does, this fella does not like how I talk to black men, soul brothers. This is where his anger comes from. Oh, I, I see why you're angry. Because you have daddy issues because of your father. Which that would be fine. And I could accept that. If you show the evidence, where's the videos? Where's, where's the videos? Where's the writing? Where do I write? I don't like my father and whatever. I'm like Shaq. My biological didn't bother. That's not hate. I'm not upset. That's just simply the reality. That's simply the truth. My biological did not bother. No big deal. I'm fine. I don't have children. In my 20s, and even now, I reach out to younger people and try to help them do better. I try to be a mentor. I try to practice the African proverb. It takes a village to raise a child. If you say that a woman cannot raise a man and you sit back in the cut and do nothing, then you're a clown. Because that's your responsibility. If you are saying that a woman cannot raise a man and you sit back and don't do nothing, then you're a hypocrite and you're a damn clown with your happy ass. <laughs> that's for, that's for Sister Ann. <laughs> Who the hell are you to talk about anything, anybody? Selfish ass. I don't know how many young people, male and female, throughout the years, I've had sit downs and talks. We go to the zoo. We go and do things with, with the children throughout the years. Why will I do that? Because nobody did that with me. So I will do that, extend myself to a child because I know how I feel to be in that position. I'm going to accept that responsibility. He's trying to find a reason to reject reality. I hate black men because he don't like the way we talk here. Remember when he was here and I told him, we don't babysit people here. We don't babysit people on this platform. We don't give credit unless you earn it here. See, men like that, they won't unearn credit and praise for doing nothing. They want the title of being a man, but they don't really want somebody to tell them and put the pressure on them, well, you need to prove it, Mr. Man. You a leader. They want the praise, they want the credit, but they don't want to actually 
do what's necessary in order to live up to that title. That's what he don't like. What's wrong with Angel Snuffing Up 7? Asking us. I'm going to use this as an example. Black Americans, we are 13 to 15 percent of the population, I'm told. Maybe, maybe a little more. I don't, I don't know. We we're gonna just we're gonna use 15 percent of the population. The black American, <laughs> yeah, right. He was he a crying sissy. We we're gonna just use this as an example. Black Americans, we are, let's say we are 15% of the population, right? What's wrong with Angel Snuffing Up 7 bringing to us who are the males? We are supposed to be the providers. We're supposed to be the leaders. We, we the strong gender, all that beautiful stuff that y'all talk about. Then my question to the men is, why aren't we 15% in power in this country? Why aren't we demanding our 15% power in this country? He has a problem with that. Why do you have a problem with that? You are the one making the claim. You are a leader. You are a provider. You are. So we're asking you, we're asking us, well, do it. Angel Snuffing Up 7 is the problem. How am I the problem? We were just talking about this on a live stream a few days ago. You don't want to be held accountable. You want to make all these claims, what you can do and what you're supposed to be. And you can't live up to it. You want to get angry because somebody called you out on your bull. You want somebody to call you father. You ain't no damn father. How the hell are you a father and you don't even have 15% power in this country? Mr. Father. So what percentage of power do your child get? Absolutely nothing. Because you're not demanding. You're not making. You're not even getting your, your 15% power. That's minimum. That's minimum. You should be getting more. But at minimum, we black men in this country the leaders you should begin we should begin our 15 percent. now what you do get you don't mind getting your 15 percent of crack cocaine you don't mind doing more than your 15 percent being in the military go get your head blowed off in the ukraine or africa some damn where iraq you get your 15 percent at the liquor store at the whole house you get your 15% in basketball and football, baseball. But you don't get your 15% in power in this nation. And you get angry at Angel Snuffed Up 7 because that's what men are supposed to do. Nobody's holding you accountable. These women sleeping with you, you don't deserve no putain. You don't deserve no babies. You have not earned it. You're not no men. And then these women turn around and be all upset. You knew you was laying down with a boy when you spread your legs.
I'm going to use Jay-Z for an example. I'm not trying to pick on Jay-Z. Jay-Z is Mr. Millionaire, Billionaire, or, 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 or whatever. And, and he smokes cigars or, or whatever. Jay-Z don't have no damn power. Jay-Z children come into a world, he makes no laws, he controls no resources, he's a nobody. Another man can walk in and take everything Jay-Z have away from him overnight. Exactly, this is facts. All our big shot Negroes, LeBron James, Bob Johnson, uh, all our people with, with a little money, a little influence, whoever the hell they think they are, these people can take all of it away, away overnight. That's why Jay-Z is careful in what he say. That's why these people are be careful in what they say. What's his name? Ye? He called himself Kanye. His name is Ye now. He was just talking about the, the Jews or, or whatever, which a lot of the things that he was saying is true. But he's going to turn, right? They do this all the time. You meant what you said. Stand on yours. I heard that Ye turned around and made an apology. They do this stuff all the time. Because he running his mouth. He know damn well he's not in a position to challenge these people. They break your ass down. They'll frame your ass with a crime, uh, an IRS debt or something, whatever. Your ass will end up in jail or they just simply put a bullet in your brain. That's what happened in this country. You too scared to stand up like a man. I want my 15%. Or nobody gonna be happy in this country. That's how we supposed to roll in this nation. If I'm not happy, you ain't gonna be happy either. And I don't give a damn what you do. You can hurt me, I can hurt your ass too. What is it they, they say? What is it that they say? Uh, if you want some ass, you got to bring some. We are here in the heart of this nation. We know things in this nation. If we as men rose up in this nation, they would have serious problems. On top of that, we are Economically, they need us. But you don't have proper leadership. We don't have men to lead the charge. A bunch of Donald Ducks, a bunch of quackers like this guy. Living in his fantasy world. Fiction and fantasy world. They angry at Angel Snub number seven. How the hell am I bashing? How do I hate black men when the only thing I'm asking us to do is to be who you claim you are? I hate black men. And that means all of us. Oh, he didn't apologize? I saw a video somebody had in the title that he uh, apologized or something. But I hope he didn't apologize. Stand on yours. Why shouldn't Kanye, yay, why, why shouldn't he stand on, on his? E exactly. Michael Jackson, no, he didn't have any power. He's on the steps. Uh, Michael Jackson, I think it was 2001, 2002 or whatever. He was, he was on the steps with Al Sharpton. Uh, so, Sony is evil. Sony did this to me. You, you bad, Sony. You, you, you bad, Sony. 
<laughs> Tommy, Tommy Matola. But I'm gonna tell you the thing about Michael Jackson also is he really was mad because he wasn't selling the records like he was. And Sony stopped spending all that promotional money on his records. That's what really that's what really it was about with Michael Jackson at that time. Because as long as Thrill was selling, as long as the record label was spending money on pushing, promoting his records, he didn't say a damn thing. What is it that Eric Muhammad said? Talk black to me. As long as those folks was promoting Michael Jackson records, he didn't say nothing. Nothing, nothing changed. What was Michael Jackson complaining about Sony in 1983 when Thriller was out? Where, why was, where was Michael Jackson complaining in 1979, 1978? They was under Sony. He wasn't selling records like he was no more. He went from 40 million, barely making 5 million selling records. And Sony is a business. It's a business. It's the music business. We got we have other artists that we can push. Why are we going? Why are we going to invest in Michael Jackson? He's not selling the records like he was. That's really what the bottom line. So Michael got with Al Sharpton. They they cheated me. They they was they some bad people. They, they, they. I don't like fake folks. That's fake. They was bad in 1979. They was bad when your album Bad came out, sir. <laughs> That's what that was all about. And he even said it. They're not, they're not promoting my record. You're not selling, sir. You're not selling the way you was. Your record sales is basically average now. You're not selling 20 million, 15 million no more. He went from 40 million to 20 million to 15 million to 5 million. That's what happened. Let's be real and honest. Let's be real and honest with this. I understand y'all said the white man's the devil and, and, and all that and people cheat you. Let's, let's be real about the whole thing. Let's be honest about the whole thing. Who's bad? <laughs> That's what that was all about. Speaking of Michael Jackson, when you saw little children going to Neverland Ranch, They was all white. Come on now, let's be truthful with this. And you know we, we, we love Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson. But this is the reality of it because I saw it with my own eyes. When we saw children going to Neverland, they was all, some of them was, a lot of them was handicapped. They were sick or whatever, but they was all white. Then when those child molestation charges start hitting Michael Jackson and he needed the support from anywhere he could get it. See, people, all, I don't like people that use us. We let, we let people use us. So when those child molestation charges came out, <clears throat> exactly, it was a few. But on TV, see, I don't even know, I don't know about your adopted uh, uh, cousin, but when we watch a TV, I'm talking about, we are influenced by TV and what we see on TV and from what we know, all I ever saw was 
white children. And Michael would go to the hospital in other countries and visit white children. He went to Africa, I think one time or a few times or whatever. I didn't see him with African children in the hospital, holding their hands or nothing like that or whatever. But when he got hit with those child molestation allegations, he put black children on a bus and brought them to Neverland. He put them on a bus. Prior to that, you didn't see you didn't see a lot of black children. You didn't see, unless they was Webster, <laughs> unless they was Webster, or some famous uh, some famous child, Gary Coleman or something. I don't even think he I don't even think he invited Gary Coleman to uh, Neverland Ranch. Uh, Gary Coleman, one of the greatest child stars ever. May he rest in peace. I love me some. What you talking about, Willis? I love Gary Coleman. I saw Gary Coleman for the first time. He was on Good Times with Penny, Janet Jackson, that show. That little boy, Gary Coleman, Bad Mama Java, one of the best, one of the greatest child stars ever. Rest in peace, soul brother, Gary Coleman. What you talking about, Willis? Love that. Love Gary Coleman. One of the baddest, greatest. I don't. Gary Coleman, so he was a little boy. Gary Coleman, something else. May he rest in peace, Gary Coleman. I understand. Like I said, I can be corrected. I can be corrected. I could be wrong. I'm only going by the media. I don't know Michael Jackson. I don't know his business. I can only go by what I saw. I see in magazines and, and, and whatever. And, and what people say that know him, I've never. The majority of the children that went to Neverland always was white. Even, even our stars of today, they entertain white children more than our children because that's they are the ones with the disposable income. They are the ones that's connected to the managers and the venues. A white man can get to Terry Ellis before me because they, they are in that position. And most of their money is coming from white people. Now you could actually, you could make a, you could make a decent living by entertaining just black folks, going to our club or whatever. But see, a lot of us, we want that. We want what white folks can give us. We want that spotlight. We want the TV. We want the media. We want the newspaper. We're not loyal to nothing except our own pocketbook. When you think about James Brown and Tina Turner, who is in the audience? When you talk, think about Michael Jackson, who, who is in the audience? Who is on the front row? Who is on the front row of these large venues? It's them, it's white folks. Black people, we don't have, we don't, we don't have that kind of money, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a ticket. We don't have money like that. It's them. And just a few years ago, these same artists would have to go through the back of the building. Colored only signs was up. 
just a few years ago, when I was a little boy, colored signs, colored only signs was up. These people throwing bottles at your tour bus, shooting at your tour bus. I just saw uh, the that movie, The Temptations. It happened to them. They had a flat, the bus had a flat, Pecker Woods passing by, and they shooting at the bus. Who knows what Chuck Berry went through and Little Richard and all our people during that period of time, 50s and 60s. Because the, the way they had to make a living, they still had to go to the white man. And we always talking this crossover stuff. I don't give a damn if you like my music or not. But that's not how we think. When the white folks accept me, when they like me, I made it. That's how we think. We don't care. All the black people in the country love you. That ain't good enough. All the black people, all the 40 million black people in the country, they love you. That ain't good enough. I want to cross over. I don't feel love until the white folks love me. This is the attitude, this is the sick mindset that we have. I don't give a damn if they like me or not. If you buy my record, that's cool. If you don't, that's cool. As long as mine love me, I don't care. But that's not how we think. And this is the mindset that the blackly black, pro blackly black, this is what we're dealing with this mindset and it's even among them now they won't listen to angel snuffing up seven but if minister farcon like angel snuffing up seven all of a sudden everybody like angel snuffing up seven well Mr. Farrakhan, like Angel number seven, this is because we have a zombie. We don't even think for ourselves. Last year, all those people some of them, many of them have been listening to Angel number seven for years. And they're going to stab they're going to stab me in the back over some pieces of trash, they don't even know why. Just believe lies. And then when the when all the dust settle, they feel stupid. Well, I, I didn't know is it that is. that's because we don't think. And we get emotional over anything we don't know how to sit back in the cut and just watch because it's none of your business anyway that's none of your business sit back in the cut and watch and see but you but as you know we love drama and we want to be part of that drama put our little two cents in then when the dust settles they all look stupid. All these big mouth ass people, where they at? They had all that mouth talking all this crap. Angel Snub Nub Seven still talking. Angel Snub Nub Seven still rolling. You had all that big mouth talking this crap. Where you at now? Where they at? Loser ass. But that's because we don't have men, because men would not tolerate this kind of behavior. Strong men. 
we are 15% of the population, you're going to give me 50% power base in this country. The Congress should see our 15% representation. The court should see our 15% representation in the courts. It should be a demand. Or we're going to have some problems up in this house. But men, these men are not men. And they get angry at me because I'm calling them out, holding them accountable. You making babies to give them nothing. These women have a right and they are justified in how they feel because women know they know they don't they know they don't have a man. But I'm a woman, I want to have a baby. I, I it's like going in the trash, trying to pick up, you know, the best trash to work with. These women know they don't have no men. Their nature tell them they don't have no men. But the but their maternal instinct, oh, they can't be hard on you. Oh, that white man is so mean to the black man. It's so hard to be a black man. Oh, oh, baby. This is the reason why we are in the condition that we're here because we're babyfied. The women babyfied us as boys and men babyfy us as adults. We got a baby bottle in our mouth when we infants and we got a baby bottle in our mouth when we get grown that turn into a beer bottle. <laughs> it turned into a beer bottle. It's either beer, vodka, gin, milk, whatever. It's some kind of, some kind of bottle we keep in our mouth. <laughs> bottle mouth ass people. <laughs> listen, listen to the conversation of the average man. Hey, look. Listen to the conversation of the average man. I mean, just go and just stand on the corner somewhere where black men, go to a, a, the black man barbershop and listen to that conversation. It's been a long time since I've been to the barbershop, as you know. I don't really go to the barbershop like that. But go to the barbershop and listen to what black how black men talk about. Matter of fact, they even make videos. Now, this is just me. This is just me. Instagram to me is, is really a woman thing. Because women like to make pictures and, you know, that's woman crap. I watched a lot of the videos that the men put up. I'm like, oh, oh, goodness. They be jumping around dancing and some of the men on Instagram be twerking. <laughs> They, they show how they can jump and, <laughs> and play. <laughs> I think, I, what, what is it Salt, Salt said in that video? I think I want to have your baby. Salt, you crazy as hell. <laughs> I think Salt is divorced from her husband now. <laughs> you know they wouldn't no man when you got them. These are not no men. They got a dangling. ain't they? You're right. I I I I definitely got a ding a ling all right. Salt know about that. It was nothing salty about it, was it salt? <laughs> yeah, you know about the ding a ling. <laughs> that's what he talks about because that's all he, he he doesn't have he doesn't have much to offer. And, and some of them make a little make make a little money. And put on some you know, fancy clothes and whatever. She don't have a man. But they want the respect. They want the honor. They want the praise. They want the credit of being a man. I, we don't give credit unless you earn it. So you can take your happy ass, sir, 
and go on about your business. Because I'm not, we're not going to do that here. That's why we are in the trouble we are in. Now. And some of them, like the Dickens said, you know, the dingling make them feel like a man. And they come on video and scream and holler, black power and the white man, the devil. That don't impress nobody. Do you think the president of Russia is impressed because you go on the battlefield, hip, ho, 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 white man's the devil, hip, ho, ho, ho. He sent one of his drones and blow all y'all up at one time. <laughs> I hate black men because I want us to be strong. I hate black men because I hold us accountable for the horrid condition that we find ourselves in. It's because there's no man here. Because men would not tolerate this condition. Men would not tolerate police killing our people all over this country. We tolerate that and let it let it fly, let it let it go. Killing our children, kill, killing our women. We men and we let gangs come in our neighborhoods and terrorize our children and our women. Mr. Man. So I'm wrong for asking us to be men. If you are a protector, you might have to die. That's life. Police officers are protectors. Soldiers are protectors. There's a possibility you could be killed in action. If you are a protector, I protect my woman, I protect my children, there's a possibility you could die in action. Oh, you didn't know that? Dr. King died in action. He never saw his grandchildren. He didn't get to see his children grow up. Malcolm X died in action. Medgar Evers died in action. They did not see their children grow up. They did not see their grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren because you are a protector, you are a leader, you are a provider. You might die in action. You want to be a little sissy and you want the same praise and the same honor as Malcolm X or Dr. King or true any true revolutionary. I'm not going to give it to you. Let your sissy ass wife and your pitiful ass, low quality ass children, let them honor you. You're not a father. You barely a daddy. You're nothing but a bunch of sperm donors. I'm not going to give you no credit and you didn't earn it. I can go out here and look at the, out the window and look at these black men go up and down my street. Pitiful and pathetic. I have black men that tell me, Angel, you, we don't talk like we used to. What, 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 what are we going to talk about? You ready to make a revolutionary move? They want to talk about the weather. They want to talk about Malcolm X. They want to talk about some nonsense. I don't want to talk to you for what? I'm not lonely. I don't want to talk to no damn man like that. If I get lonely, I call Sister Ann. If I get lonely, I call Mello or somebody. I, I don't want to talk to no damn man. Men are supposed to be men. We're supposed to be taking care of business. What are we doing as revolutionaries? What are we doing to protect our women and children? What are we doing to control our destiny? That's what I want to talk to a man about. I don't give a damn about no basketball games. 
I don't give a damn about a YouTube video. What are we going to do in order to solve this problem that we have once and for all? All that hoop hollering, black power, and trying to talk tough at the video. Nobody give a damn about that crap. You won't impress nobody. So I hate black men because I want us to be men. And I want to fall in love with a man. There's nothing gay about it. There's nothing queer about it like Minister Farrakhan said. Oh, Mr. Minister Farrakhan, uh, the way you do your love with men, yes, there is a problem with that, sir. Kissing people in the mouth. No, I know we don't do that. We should have a love for men. That young boy should look up to us and say, wow, look how brave my daddy is. Look what we have. We control water. Look at our nuclear power plant. Look at our farmland. We could, woo, we got so much going on in this, in this country. And if we can't do it in this country, then we got to go. We got to leave. You don't settle for the position that we are in right now. That's You don't settle. That's like being, having a roommate situation. We are roommates in this country. We roommates and we pay equal rent. But one roommate, his bedroom is bigger. He gets more food. He pays less of the phone bill. You wouldn't tolerate that. You would not tolerate living like that. You go to that roommate and you would say, hey, man, you need to pay more rent. You need to pay some more bills here. You know, or what, you know you're not going to tolerate that. You're going to leave. This is a fact. When you become a man, You don't even want to live in your parents' house no more. You ready to go get your own house. Make your own family. Do your own fizzy. You tell your father, it was nice knowing you. I'm mar I was married now. And you want your own house, your own picket fence. You want to do your own fizzy because you're a man. So... How can we call ourselves a, a, a man living in the United States and we don't even get our 15%? How can you call yourself a man? How do you expect women and children to look up to us as men when we let other men get over on us? This should not be tolerated. You're not going to let your father do it. You're not going to stay in your father's house and do it. But you're going to, but you're going to live here with these suckers that lynched us. All right, we ain't forgot. We ain't forgot. Fed our babies to alligators. Tar and feathered us. Worked you from sun up to sun down. We ain't forgot. And you're going to lay up in, th in this house. Paying unequal bills. You don't even get your 15%. But you wouldn't let your daddy get away with it. You wouldn't let a, your roommate get away with it. I got to go. So, just like Elijah Muhammad said. Elijah Muhammad taught. If, if we can be treated fairly in this country, then we can do that. But if we're not, we need to separate. So it looks like we need to separate. And that's what the Mississippi campaign is about. Separation 
organized separation because we know that you're comfortable. So it's organized in a way over a period of time when it comes down to the nitty gritty, if you need to separate, it's done. It's a done deal. Time to leave. Let them have it. Let them have this country. Take your talents, take your money, take your take everything you got somewhere else where they appreciate you. You're not appreciated here. That's what men do. So you can say that you hate angels, angels number no, no, seven, hate men all you want to. But I guarantee you, if we stood up and acted upon what I'm talking about, holding ourselves accountable, and we actually earn the praise, earn the honor, it don't make no difference. Nobody have to tell you nothing. I still don't, I still don't respect you. Nobody don't give a damn. But now you in power. When I tell your happy ass to cross on to the other street because it's against the law, you're going to obey. I will put your ass in jail. Yes, sir. Don't give a damn if you respect me or not. You're going to obey the law. Now, see, now you're talking. Just like this, like the, like these, like the people that run this country. You can call them white, you can call them the devil and Esau's children and you call them names, whatever names you want to call them. You break their law, they taking your happy ass to jail, they'll put a bullet in your brain. Caring about I don't dis, I, I don't respect the white man. He don't he don't care. He has the power to put you in prison the rest of your life. He has the power to put you in the grave. Don't give a damn whether you respect him or not. And that's what we want. Give me my 15%. Give me my 15% of power. So I can make some laws. So if anybody come in my neighborhood, wherever I'm at, I make the law. I make the law. You don't have to respect me. But this is the law here. I'll put your ass in jail. And you can disrespect me behind bars, <laughs> sir, ma'am, or whatever you want to call, whatever you want to call yourself. Because nowadays they they gender confused. They don't know whether they male or female. So, sir, ma'am, whatever you want to call yourself, I don't, I don't know. You don't disrespect you. You don't respect me. Well, you're gonna respect these these bars. <laughs> you're gonna respect this thousand dollar fine that I put on your happy ass. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going to be disrespected. You don't re respect me all the way to the damn bank like these people do. They don't care about all that silly stuff y'all talking about or whatever. Give me my 15% at minimum power. But these people, these so-called men, the only thing they want, show off the ding -a -ling. Man, you just jealous. Man, you just jealous because you ain't packing like I, I am. That, that's what it is. He jealous. That's why he keep bringing that up. Because he ain't packing like I do. Mm -hmm. He don't have the money like I do. Money that you don't give any value to. Another man puts money, value on your money. Everything that you got, another man put value on it. Nothing you have, you give value to. Not even 15%. As men, that's not acceptable. But you're not a man. Bunch of comfortable sperm donors. And these poor women keep making babies with you. Producing more pitiful, low-quality males. Yes, I do hate weak-ass black men. You're absolutely right. I hate weak-ass, pathetic, loser-ass black men. Yes, let's get the adjectives right. But I love a strong black man. Malcolm X, strong black man. Dr. King, strong black man. A lot of, a, a lot of the brothers, strong black men. 
you ain't. The last 50 years prove that you ain't strong. You have not added nothing to the struggle in the last 50 years except a YouTube video. That's the best your happy ass can do. But you won't, you won't honor and praise like you Dr. King or somebody. Like you Nat Turner. None of you suckers is close to Nat Turner. You dropped your guns in a drop of a dime. Soon as the state police sheriffs pull up, you drop your gun. I gills up. I didn't do nothing. That was twin. That was twin. Those twins. They the ones. They got the gun. <laughs> they got the gun. They got the AK-47. It was twin. And it was and that, that woman right there, Sister Ann, she got a 22 in her bra. Sister, that woman they call Sister Ann, she got a 22 in her bra. Can I get a deal? Can I get a <laughs> that's 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 the kind of people we talk about. <laughs> Weak ass sellouts. <laughs> so no, you're not gonna come here and get a pass. We give credit where credit when you earn. Don't give you praise and honor for something. That includes me, that includes anybody. When you earn the credit, you get it. Matter of fact, you shouldn't even trip off of it. Because you know who you are. You know what the deal is. <laughs> so on that note, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Man, I thought this was supposed to be a, uh, a short video. But like always, we just start talking and <laughs> I don't know what short videos are. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what they are. I do enjoy talking to our to our audience. Uh I don't give a care if it's just me and the Deacons or Sister Ann or whoever, uh, my 10 subscribers. And I don't care. I can talk. I've talked by myself. No big deal. I don't care about all that. Sooner or later, somebody will listen, but I mean, I can, we talk, I talk. <laughs> hey, Brother Denzel, got to, got to stop doing everything we're doing. Brother Denzel in the house. Brother Denzel in the house. Somebody told me men are offended. How can, how can men be offended? What am I saying? Or what have I said that offend you? I hate black men. Because you're not living up to being a strong black man. So the sisters don't have too much of a choice to be an independent, strong black woman because she damn sure don't have a man. So how are you going to get angry at her? I'm a strong, I'm a strong, independent black woman how you gonna get angry with her making a declaration like that because she don't have a man if she had a man i doubt she would make a de declaration like that if she felt as though she had a man you want to play games with the sister i saw i'm gonna say this we're gonna we're going to get out of here. I'm glad I'm not pro-black. I'm glad I'm not pan-African. Because I, I love our people. I love our people. I love the people that I come from. I love my gender. I love us. We're going to have to stand up and do better. It's simple as that. I can't judge nobody. Because I did not walk in their shoes. We love to, we're self-righteous and we judge mental people. I can't tell others how to think. I can't tell others how to, how, what to feel. I 
I can't do that. All of us have different experience in life and things affect us differently. So I like Oprah Winfrey. I like Oprah Winfrey ever since she came on TV. I did not even trip about Oprah's weight. I thought Oprah was a beautiful woman. I thought she was articulate. I like Oprah Winfrey. I always watch Oprah Winfrey. And I like Gail King. I like her friend. I think those sisters are beautiful. They are intelligent. They are smart. I love women like that. I've always been attracted to women who are, who are articulate, intelligent, and smart. I love that. I'm not intimidated. I encourage that. Gail King, her husband cheated on her with her friend. That's a hurtful thing. Not only was she cheated on by her husband, but it was with a friend. Dev that's devastating. That, that's, that hurts to the core. So how can I go to Gail King and tell her, yeah, black men, this and the black, marry her. Now, if you notice, to my knowledge, Gail King has never, to my knowledge, she still never dated a, a white guy. Because a lot of us, we get hurt and we run to white people. Black men, I, I hate black men. They do this. I don't like black women. And they run to, to white folks or whatever. To my knowledge, Gail King, even though she's surrounded by white men all, all the time, to my knowledge, she's never romantically been involved with a, a Caucasian guy. But if she got with a Caucasian, who am I to judge, judge her? I can't tell people how to feel about their experience or what to do. But see, this is where it all comes down. Even though she went through that hurt, even though Gail King went through that hurt, when she opened up her eyes and wiped away her tears, if she still was able to see strong brothers standing strong, we not like that. I'm with you. I got your back then maybe the sisters would not be drawn toward them. We build our thing so we can give Oprah a job. We can give Gail a job. We can give En Vogue a job. Open up factories and casinos and give our women and our children jobs. But the only job we want to give <laughs> You know what kind of job? <laughs> That's a damn shame. And they angry at me. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Angel Snub No. 7 hate black men. Because I have daddy issues. I don't have a problem with my, I never had a problem with my father. How am I going to have a problem? <laughs> how, how am I going to have a problem with my father? And I don't even really know who he is. I, I really don't, really don't know. We never had, we never had that kind of relationship. I don't, he never, he never abused me. He never screamed. He never screamed at me. I we just didn't. He just wasn't there. And there was reasons behind that. Oh, well, I'm not the only child that didn't have a father in my life. So what? But there have been men who acted like a father. Physically, 
and what you call spiritually. Elijah Muhammad was just somebody I read in a book and he became a father figure for me. And I will always respect Elijah Muhammad. Do, do I agree with a lot of the things that he did? No. I'm very sure there are, there are things your father that your parents have done. Why you do that, mama? Why you do that, daddy? That's life. That's life, y'all. Mama ain't supposed to please you. Daddy ain't supposed to please you. And you're not going to please them. That's life. A love-hate relationship. Now, boy, you know you shouldn't did that, but I still love you. <laughs> I still love you, boy. I, I told you don't go to that college. But, you know, that's, that's your business. Yeah, I, I still love you. We hate our children. They become transgender, bisexual, whatever the hell they are. That's still your child. I mean, there's nothing that you can do about it. A lot of this stuff happens because of religion. God don't like transgender. God don't. Who gives a damn what, what God don't like? This God ain't doing a damn thing for you except giving you orders. Don't do this. Don't do that. Well, God, what you going to do for me? Okay, I'm not I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. What, what are you going to do for me, Mr. God? Laying around in heaven or wherever this God is at, always giving orders. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not covet. Your neighbor's wife, you come down. down. This God got all these rules. Got a whole thick ass book. Thousands, hundreds of pages. Chapter 12, chapter 15, section B8. All these rules for your happy ass. And what do this God do for us? I praised this God for years since I was a little boy. John, Jesus laid me down to sleep, but for the Lord sold my soul to keep. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, all praise him. Shimla la ha la ha ka him. Shimla la ha ka 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 dim. I'm trying to serve God. God ain't did a damn thing for me. I'm giving God credit for things God didn't do. I went out and got my own job. I'm the one that went out and. If I didn't do it, it didn't get done. I'm laying around. Look what God did for me. God got me a job. This is a good job. No. I went to the newspaper, took my happy ass down to the, to the store, filled out an application. I went on a job interview, and I qualified for the job and got to work. And God didn't do nothing, none of it. God didn't even give me bus fare. I'm giving God credit for all my work. Never, never again. When God do something, that's because God actually done it. You won't get that report here. God ain't did a damn thing. And I'm still waiting for the spirits and the spooks and the people that astral project out their body I'm still waiting on your happy ass to come here so we can interview you on live stream. Still waiting. Not one spook, not one spirit, not one person asked to project their happy ass on the live stream. Still waiting on you. You can continue to do that and say Angel Snuffin' Up 7 hate black men, but that's a damn lie. There's nothing wrong with me holding ourselves accountable and being the man that you claim you are. You're not going to get praise and honor that you do not earn. We don't do that here. 
you can go to another channel and somebody will give you praise and honor. Weak ass. We're not going to do that here. So on that note, let me get out of here. We're going to catch y'all on the flip. And uh, you take it easy. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, shout out to uh, Denzel, um, the twins, and Sister Ann, of course, Mellow Cap, uh, Razzy Fry, Brother Talib, uh, Soul Brother 47, and, and, and Bruce and his family, um, Sister Tangi and her family, Josiah, uh, our people in London, uh, California, and all over the world. Thank you so much. Uh, Tafari Smith, Angela Hines, our main uh, people here. Thank you so much um, for your continued support of this platform. No man should be upset about what I say here. Men will say we have to do better. When I look at the chat room, when I talk to the deacons, they just simply say, man, we got to do better. Being in denial is not going to help you. Wanting somebody to babysit is not going to make you better. It makes things worse. We are protector. If you are protector, then there's a possibility you would be killed in action. And that's the problem. You are actually afraid to be a man because in order to be a man and a protector, then you're going to have to suffer the consequences. You might have to be killed in action. Being a man, that's just the reality of it. And I'm not going to try to sugarcoat a damn thing for us. But the thing about it, you stand up, we stand up and be men. I can guarantee you the attitude of our women and our children will change. They've never seen real men stand up before and they will support you and they will honor you in life and death. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Shout out to Instagram and, and Facebook uh, listeners. Those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast at a later time, I thank you so much. As our brother, Don Cornelius, used to always say as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and so, so we are all 5,000. Twenty David to command the home of you.